Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's as we gather together online to celebrate the Feast of St. Michael and All Angels and to mark the first National Day of Truth and Reconciliation, which occurs this Thursday, September 30th. This morning will be a triple C service, and you'll find the order of services available on our website in the sermon section. Let us pray. May the angels of light glisten for us this day. May the sparks of God's beauty dance in the eyes of those we love. May the universe be on fire with your presence. May the new sun's rising grace us with gratitude. Let earth's greenness shine and its waters breathe with spirit. Let heaven's wind stir the soul, the soil of our soul, and fresh awakenings rise within us. May the mighty angels of light glisten in all things this day. May they summon us to reverence. May they call us to life. Amen. Our opening hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our God is right before us saying, may we awake from our sleep and say, may we join the angels in heaven and on earth and whisper in awe. Let us pray together the collect for this morning. God, who created all things, seen and unseen, make us messengers of your compassion, so that with Michael and the hosts of heaven, we may end ancient conflicts and pave the way for justice, kindness, and humility. Through Christ, the firstborn of creation, amen. And let us pray together the covenant collect Creator God, from you every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. You have rooted and grounded us in your covenant of love and empowered us by your spirit to speak the truth in love and to walk in your way towards justice and wholeness. Mercifully grant that your people, journeying together in partnership, 
may be strengthened and guided to help one another to grow into the full stature of Christ, who is our light and our life. Amen. Well, it's a joy to be able to share a children's time. And uh, this is something that uh, um, is a song about protection. It's a song, and we'll get that up on the screen, called All Night, All Day, Angels Watching Over Me, My Lord. There are Places in, in, the, in the Bible that talk about uh, uh, he shall give his angels charge concerning you uh, to watch over you in all your ways is a promise in Psalm 91. Uh, Jesus speaks about uh, uh, angels uh, of the little ones watching over them. And, uh, and we believe that there is so much in this world that we don't know about and that's... Uh, there's so much that's a mystery, and that there are uh, those uh, uh, that are uh, beyond our uh, ability to understand the things that sometimes uh, that happen in this wonderful world. And so we believe that uh, the Lord is watching over us and protecting us, and, uh, and that the Lord uh, has uh, angels to surround us and care. And uh, this is a, uh, a song that's especially uh, sometimes sung at uh, bedtime. And that's why when we get to verse 2, you'll see that it actually uh, talks about uh, uh, now I lay me down to sleep. And some of you who learned a prayer, now I uh, uh, lay me down to sleep. I pray my Lord, the, my, uh, the Lord my soul to keep will we'll remember that prayer from bedtime. So it's a song that just reminds us of what we especially remember uh, in this uh, St. Michael and All Angels feast day about uh, how our God is, is so awesome that, uh, and our Lord does indeed uh, watch over us and is present with us always. So let's learn the song. And it's a very simple one. It goes, all night. All day, angels watching over me, my Lord. All night, all day, angels watching over me. So and aren't, I'm afraid I don't know any actions to it. There might be some actions out there somewhere. I don't know, you can flap your wings or something. <laughs> but uh, uh, I just learned it as a very simple song with no, I have no particular actions. And that's the same tune for the... Uh, uh, the verses as the chorus, so it's very simple to learn. So let's uh, sing it uh, together. All night, all day, angels watching over me, my Lord. All night, all day, angels watching over me. Sun is setting in the west, Angels watching over me, my Lord. Sleep, my child, and take your rest. Angels watching over me. All night, all day. Angels watching over me, my Lord. All night, all day. Angels watching over me. Now I lay me down to sleep. Angels watching over me, my Lord. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Angels watching over me. All night, all day. Angels watching over me, my Lord. All night, all day. 
angels watching over me. Lord, stay with me through the night, angels watching over me, my Lord. Wake me with the morning light, angels watching over me. All night, all day, angels watching over me, my Lord. All night, all day, angels watching over me. Once more, all night, all day, angels watching over me, my Lord. All night, all day, angels watching over me. So let's just bow our heads in prayer. Our loving God, we thank you that you are watching over us, that your angels are watching over us, protecting us through the hours of the night when we sometimes especially just need to be reminded of that. But every day as well, all day, all night, every day of our lives and even forevermore, we are safe in you and we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. portion of Psalm 103, I invite you to say the parts that are in the yellow italics. The Lord has set his throne in heaven, and his kingship has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding, and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Together. Glory, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. We'll now have our first reading. We're having some technical difficulties, uh, so I will go ahead and read. No, 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 just hold this a second, no, just because uh, I did, you know, I did ask this person to read for us, and they did do it. Uh, if we can just get this to work in the will. And it's actually, it's the rest of the slideshow as well that isn't working right now, so it, <laughs> it won't do us any good to stop. So we're just going to exit out.
sun had gone down, he stopped for the night. He took one of the stones there, and, using it as a pillow under his head, he lay down to sleep. Jacob set out from Beersheba and journeyed towards Haran. He came to a certain shrine, and, because the sun had gone down, he stopped for the night. He took one of the stones there, and, using it as a pillow under his head, he lay down to sleep. In a dream he saw a ramp, which rested on the ground with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were going up and down it. The Lord was standing beside him, saying, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. This land on which you are laying I shall give to you and your descendants. They will be countless as the specks of dust on the ground, and you will spread far and wide, to west and east, to north and south. All the families of the earth will wish to be blessed as you and your descendants are blessed. I shall be with you to protect you wherever you go. I shall bring you back to this land. I shall not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob woke from his sleep, he said, Truly, the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He was awestruck and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. It is the gateway to heaven. Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 to 17. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our gradual hymn is Praise the Father. be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. 
How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than that. Then he added, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be now and ever acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, I apologize for the technical difficulties, which 90% uh, of which were, uh, were me. Uh, and uh, just to let everyone back the sound know, yes, that was out. <laughs> we had a bit of issues with our sound uh, this morning, so my apologies to, uh, to Ashley uh, before the first reading, but we had uh, uh, a lot of other ones that were as a result of me having a, a much better sleep than I had intended. <laughs> so I do apologize for that. And... Uh, so thank you to my brothers in the Lord for their, uh, their working very hard uh, this morning, extra hard. Um, I want to talk about our Lord's uh, watching over us and uh, uh, in particular uh, looking today, of course, at our, at our passages and what they have to say about that. And we'll begin with uh, one of the most familiar Old Testament stories, uh, the story is often uh, described as Jacob's Ladder, uh, but actually a better translation is Stairway or Ramp. And uh, if you uh, look at that uh, slide on the screen, you'll see this is uh, uh, what it probably looked, uh, well, this is a re uh, reconstruction, but it's based on an excavation uh, that has taken place to show what a, a ziggurat looked like. And... Uh, ancient temples that had stairways leading up to the top uh, and uh, so um, that is very likely what uh, is being referred to in this passage uh, and given what happened to our dear brother Brian this past week who himself uh, was injured falling off a ladder uh, I'm especially wanting to use the more accurate translation today so we will refer to this as a stairway or ramp as we go forward. Let's look at a bit of the background to our passage in Genesis. Uh, Jacob has spent his whole life grasping the heel, that's what it literally means, his name, uh, trying to manipulate and swindle blessing for himself. Now he's fleeing for his life after having stolen his brother Esau's birthright. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, act has left Esau counting the days until their father dies. Uh, and he can kill Jacob in revenge. It says in verses 10 to 11, Jacob left Beersheba and went to Haran, and he came to a certain place and camped for the night since the sun had set. And he took one of the stones there, set it under his head, and lay down to sleep, reminding us of the words of the hymn, Though like the wanderer the sun gone down, darkness be over me, my rest a stone. I've often wondered how exhausted you'd have to be to uh, find uh, uh, a stone as a pillow to be something that would be uh, uh, what you'd be looking for, but there you go. Jacob is in this kind of situation as he's been running. And it says, in a dream he saw a ramp which rested on the ground with its top reaching to heaven and angels of God were going up and down on it. Uh, the NRSV in uh, translating this passage says, we're ascending and descending on it. It's important to remember those words. And then he has this encounter with God. He experienced God's presence. It says the Lord was standing beside him. And, and, and the message uh, translation, uh, then God was right before him, uh, it says. 
Note that Jacob didn't climb the ramp to get to God. Rather, God came down. And uh, in the relationship, then we see uh, that follows, I shall be with you to protect you. I shall not leave you. And uh, NRSV says, I am with you and will keep you. I will not leave you. The promise of, of blessing as well. Uh, blessing him and blessing others through him. Best translation would, uh, of this passage is actually uh, would be, uh, all the families of the earth will bless themselves in you and your descendants. And so there's this promise of blessing for him, but not just for him, but for all others, all the families of the earth. Derek Kidner, writing on this, says, God's promises are meeting his solitary, homeless, and precarious condition by assuring him of the covenant with his forebears, allotting him a landed inheritance, and promising for him a family that includes all the families of the earth. Walter Brueggemann points out how this is even more incredible than if this were a story about God's appearing to Abraham or Isaac. It says, in the narrative is the wonder, the mystery, and the shock that this God should be present in such a decisive way to this exiled one. The miracle is the way this sovereign God binds himself to this treacherous figure. And so we see here in this passage, covenant love, binding God to us and us to God, all of us exiles. And uh, Jacob responds. It says, when Jacob woke up from his sleep, he said, truly the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. He was awestruck and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. It is the gateway to heaven. The presence of God with us. In the messages, God is in this place truly and I didn't even know it. There's that sense of having his eyes opened to God's presence with him. Abraham Kuyper, in his classic book, Near Unto God, writes about this kind of, uh, of an intimacy with God. It says, when we know God Almighty as a presence on the path of our lives, when we have entered into a personal, particular relationship with God, then and only then does God become our Father in heaven. What we're talking about here is a relationship so personal and intimate that it can't be described in words. If you don't understand, you don't know God at that level. It's a bit like trying to explain being in love to somebody. And I say, oh, so is your heart's going flutter? And you say, yeah, well, yes, but that's really not the whole point. <laughs> um, and you can ex explain that and, and to somebody else who also has fallen in love with their beloved, they understand. And that's what Kuiper is writing about, that kind of intimacy with God. And Jacob was beginning to realize God's presence on the path of his life. God was not just going to be an idea that you throw around. It was going to actually be real. God was becoming his God. And so it says Jacob rose early in the morning and he took the stone that he put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. And he called that place Bethel means house of God. Those are the verses right after our passage. He wants God that close. He wants God where he's headed then, if you like, <laughs> and he acknowledges that God is that real. And so too for all of us. God is not just an idea. God is right here with us now, whatever we go through. And I think again of Brian and all he is going through right now and the testimony of Brian and Irene that God is with them in the midst of this. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Psalm 23 reminds us. 
And so, in a very real sense, everywhere that we would be is holy ground. For we are not alone. God is with us. Well, this story forms the background for Jesus' words in the Gospel. Just before our passage, in verses 45 and 46, it says, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. Words which, as we've said before, are, are words that we could actually have as invitation to people who might uh, say, well, I don't know about all this Jesus stuff. Uh, what difference would it really make? And you can perhaps say, come and see by inviting them into your life. Come and see by inviting them to share worship with us, either in person when we're able to do that or online now. Well, Philip was in, excited about his own encounter with Jesus, and so he invited Nathaniel. And Nathaniel was about to become excited himself. It says when, it says, when Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Four chapters after Genesis chapter 28, uh, Jacob wrestled with God all night, it says, and came to the place where he was finally at the end of himself, at the end of his strength, and relied simply on God's blessing. And his name, he who grasps the heel or deceiver, was changed to Israel. Now here, Jesus says, here is a true Israelite in whom there is basically no Jacob. <laughs> so he's making a kind of a play on words. And uh, Nathaniel says, how do you know me? In other words, he's kind of thinking, this guy's just buttering me up, and he's not impressed. And Jesus answers, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Now, we don't know exactly why that impressed him so much. What was going on there, we don't know. Was it just the fact that Jesus was aware that he had been under the fig tree before? I don't know. Was there something in particular he was asking of God under the fig tree? <laughs> Maybe uh, to be made aware of God's presence? I don't know. But he was blown away by it. And Jesus' response to that is to say, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You'll see greater things than that. He added then, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. And so, of course, that's an allusion to Genesis 28. Jesus says, you'll not just see little bits of insight, but so much more. Earlier in John's Gospel, in chapter 1, we are told the Word became flesh and tabernacled among us, reminding us, of course, of the tabernacle in the wilderness. Later in chapter 2, Jesus speaks of himself uh, as in terms of the temple, talking about, you know, destroy this temple, and in three days I will rebuild it, and says he was talking about the temple of his body. Well, here, Jesus basically says, I am the stairway, I'm the ramp. I link, I connect together heaven to earth. I came down to earth to bring heaven to you so that you can experience your hearts being lifted to heaven. And to all who are willing to be Israel, I am Bethel, the house of God. I invite you to come in and dwell with me. Through Jesus, both Nathaniel and we shall see in a way deeper than we can ever have imagined that God is with us, committed to us in love. And the one who knows all there is to know about us and wants to be with us anyway who sees possibilities for us that we can scarcely even imagine, 
that that God is present here and now. So that we know that where we are walking is indeed holy ground. The house of God is supernatural. Indeed, God is within us. We are called temples of the Holy Spirit in Scripture. That begins here and now, right where we're at. And ultimately, it ends with us knowing and loving God in total, complete intimacy, seeing God face to face. We live in a world where these unseen truths, the reality of this unseen world, can seem make-believe. We have such crazy lives, and uh, when we look around us in the world, we can see such darkness. COVID-19, of course, and all the challenges it has caused and is continuing to cause which includes a constant struggle with anxiety and fear. We see injustice, violence, corruption. We see racism, bigotry, and prejudice. We see the shadows in ourselves also of all these things. Darkness can seem so strong. It's a struggle to keep sight of God in the midst of a world like this. And in the midst of this struggle, one way the church has helped us through the centuries to do this is today's observance of the Feast of St. Michael and All Angels, where we are invited to have our eyes open to the unseen, eyes open to wonder, to more, to what is beyond us. In the Celtic spirituality it speaks of thin places to see the world as a place where heaven and earth can intersect. The maker of all things, the Lord God, worship we. Heaven white with angels' wings, earth and the white-waved seas. One of the saying from uh, in Celtic uh, tradition. The maker of all things, the Lord God, worship we, heaven white with angels' wings, earth and the white-waved sea. And there's a sense of creation, including the angels, including the unseen, and all of it somehow interacting. Michael is mentioned in the book of Daniel, in the epistle of Jude, and outside of scripture as well. A passage that's assigned for today from the book of Revelation as well, which says that he's leading an army of angels fighting for us against Satan and the powers of darkness. It gives us a glimpse at a supernatural world so beyond our little thoughts. But it's good to remember we're not told the angel's story, but ours. And so there should be no question about where we would focus. We don't focus on that. We focus on what God has spoken to us in our story. And there should be no question in our minds of all the things we don't understand. One thing we should is where the true power lies. It lies with God. In fact, the church deliberately picked a date for this feast when the increasing darkness and cold from the approach of winter outside in nature were evident to proclaim this truth that in the battle between light and darkness, good and evil, death and life, between love and hate, all those may seem, the darkness may seem so strong in, in each of those things. Evil, death, but light, life and love are stronger. But the word angel also has a wider application. Angel means messenger. You could call this feast the feast of St. Michael and all messengers, and that includes all of us. God is with us and within us and wants to include us as participants in this battle, as those who spread light and life and love as we live out our faith in the world. We are called to connect with heaven and then go and serve, 
to be angels going back and forth with a good news message of hope and healing. September 30th marks the first uh, National Day of Truth and Reconciliation. And uh, I invite us to, to observe that together. We are doing some things today that, that uh, mark that day. But uh, uh, in fact, I, uh, we are invited to wear uh, orange shirts today uh, during coffee time, perhaps. But also on the 30th especially. And to make that a day where we, we do some deep reflection. Bishop Sidney Black speaks of the pain that exists and the need for messengers of healing and reconciliation. And we'll end the sermon by, by listening to him. Might have to push play. Just push on it. Go back and... Systemic racism, discrimination, power to harm, inflicts great danger and peril to the innocent. We mourn the death of the children in unmarked graves. They were baptized into the family of God. They died the death of martyrs. The souls of these righteous little innocent children are in the hands of God and no torment will ever touch them again. The children are speaking to us now. Bring an end to these evil powers that exist in our world. The lives of the children buried in unmarked graves matter. We can no longer deny the reality of the Indian residential schools. As a church and as a confederated society, let us rise up and rebuild the broken and bring comfort to the parents and relatives of the children. As a church, these innocent children lying in unmarked graves are our brothers and sisters in Christ. They were initiated into the family of Creator by their baptisms. In the midst of this very troubling time, plus the other events happening in our communities that Archbishop Mark frequently speaks about, let us join hands and heart and lift up our hands and hearts to God. He will embrace us, hold us in the palm of his hand, and be touched with healing, comfort, and consolation by the amazing and reassuring knowledge of God's grace and love. Amen. I think you'll have to manually move it to the next. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, we need angels. We need those who are willing to be messengers to connect with heaven and then go and serve. Tommy Douglas was one that we talked about from last week. We need to go back and forth with a message of hope and healing. And uh, not try and do it in our own strength, but plugged into our power supply, or we will burn out. We'll either burn out or we'll become callous. And, and there's a third option, to care enough that it, it makes you break inside, and then to receive God's healing touch, and to keep on loving, and to keep going forth with the message of good news that we embody. And we think of our healthcare workers, caregivers, or teachers. You think of so many who are 
tasked with this. And we pray for them. And uh, each of us, of course, are, are tasked to go forth to be uh, St. Dinah, for example, or St. Paul, St. Saint, Saint Mary, St. Brian. And Brian, whom I should mention, was on a ladder. Uh, the only reason he was on that ladder was to help his neighbor out. And uh, we are called to care, to be angels who are conduits of divine life and of hope in this world. When we serve, we discover that God is with us. Want to know the Lord's presence? Perhaps you're feeling uh, like you're a little bit dry. Well, then reach out with your heart to the lonely, the forgotten, the excluded. Reach out to the broken, the angry, the betrayed. Stand shoulder to shoulder with those who are fighting injustice and you'll discover that Jesus is with you. And that what you have done for those considered the least among his brothers and sisters, you've done for him. We are not alone. God is with us. Thanks be to God. Let us affirm our faith as we say, we are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and to serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. A litany for St. Michael and all angels. We thank you, loving God, that you do not leave us without helpers. Thanks for your special agents, those guardian angels, both human and heavenly, who never cease to care. Wherever there are situations of confusion, where doubts prol proliferate and anxieties spawn, please, please send, send in, in your, your angels, angels of, light. of light. Wherever your people are crippled by guilt or deeply regret damage to others, which they can never rectify, send, send in, in your, your angels, angels of mercy. mercy. Wherever there is arrogance and deceit, corruption and rapacious greed, send, send in, in your, your fiery, fiery angels, angels of, judgment. of judgment. Wherever ignorance reigns or superstition cripples individuals or communities, please, please send, send in, in your, your angels, angels of, of truth. truth. Wherever persons or nations become obsessed with aggression or resort to terrorism and warfare, Send, Send in, in your, your angels, angels of peace, peace and, and goodwill. Wherever families are at loggerheads or in the workplace of folks, folk feel alienated from one another. Send, Send in, in your angels, angels of, of reconciliation. reconciliation. Wherever people see their future as bleak or dangerous, 
and fall into the trap of inertia or despair. Please, Please send, send in, in your, your angels, angels of hope. hope. Wherever the church becomes exclusive or gets caught up in its own regulations, traditions, or inflexibility, send, send in, in your, your angels, angels of, of reformation. reformation. Wherever pastors lose their passion for the gospel, or congregations become self-satisfied or apathetic. Please send, send in, in your, your angels, angels of rebuke. rebuke. We turn to you, Lord, this morning, lifting up all those named in our order of service who are in need of your healing, touch, and our own petitions, silently or loud, for those people and situations that are on our hearts this morning. Wherever there are people who are afflicted by disease or injured in accidents, struggle against mental ills, or suffer from criminal violence, send, send in, in your, your angels of healing. healing. Wherever the dying endure fears or pain, and the bereaved either shed the hot tears of a fresh grief, or endure the long-term loss of a partner or friend, Send, Send in, in your, your angels, angels of comfort. Loving God, Lord of all the messengers of grace on earth and in heaven, hear our prayer and enlist us, please God, within the ranks of your caring angels through Jesus Christ, your only true Son, our Savior, and our inspiration. Amen. Amen. Please join me, join with me in the remembering the children prayer. God of our ancestors, who holds the spirits of our grandmothers and grandfathers and the spirits of our grandchildren, remembering the children, we now pledge ourselves to speak the truth and with our hearts and souls to act upon the truth we have heard of the injustices lived, of the sufferings inflicted, of the tears cried, of the misguided intentions imposed, and of the power of prejudice and racism, which were allowed to smother the sounds and laughter of the forgotten children. Here are cries of lament for what was allowed to happen and for what will never be in speaking and hearing and acting upon the truth, may we as individuals and as a nation meet the hope of a new beginning. Great Creator God, who desires that all creation live in harmony and peace, remembering the children, we dare to dream of a path of reconciliation where apology from the heart leads to healing of the heart and the chance of restoring the circle where justice walks with all, where respect leads to true partnership, where the power to change comes from each heart. Hear our prayer of hope and guide this country of Canada on a new and different path. Amen. And now please join with me in a prayer in response to COVID-19. Loving and compassionate God, you call us to love our neighbors and to be bearers of your hope and grace in our world. Expand our hearts and vision to respond with compassion to those around us who are struggling in this time of uncertainty, anxiety, grief, and suffering. Give wisdom and strength to our health workers and government officials as they provide leadership in bringing our global family through this crisis. We bring before you and into our hearts and minds those whose work and income are uncertain, those who are isolated, 
those who are fearful of an unknown future, those who are homeless, and all those who offer them support and care, those in care facilities, staff and residents and their loved ones, those with businesses or jobs whose futures are uncertain, those in schools, students, teachers, staff, volunteers, and their families, those with health conditions that put them at greater risk. Give wisdom and care-filled discernment to all our church leaders as we seek to creatively live out our worship, witness and service in ways that offer Christ's life-giving love and presence. Strengthen and sustain us to be your people, shaped by your abundant grace, bearers of your generosity and overflowing love. Through Christ our light and hope, we pray. We pray. Amen. Amen. We have wounded your love. O oh God, heal us. We stumble in the darkness. Light the world, transfigure us. We forget that we are your home. Spirit of God, dwell in us. Eternal Spirit, living God in whom we live and move and have our being, all that we are, have been, and shall be is known to you. In the very secret of our hearts, you know all that rises to trouble us. Living flame, burn into us. Cleansing wind, blow through us. Fountain of water, well up within us. That we may love and praise in deed and in truth. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Wherever we may be, let us share with one another a sign of God's peace. At this time, we pause to offer to the Lord our time, talents, and treasure, remembering that the gifts we have been given are gifts to be shared. In our parish, family, one way that we share our treasure is through the offerings we give to St. Paul's. The many ways we can do this are shown here on our screens. Thank you to everyone. You're participating in the mission God has given St. Paul's of serving others by helping us carry it out through your giving of financial. We thank you for your helping us to carry out this mission through your giving of financial support. And now let us sing our offertory hymn, You Are Near.
Pray together the prayer over the gifts. God of glory, as you have appointed angels to minister in your presence, so may all our worship bring you worthy praise. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Through him, the archangels sing your praise, the angels fulfill your commands. The cherubim and seraphim continually proclaim your holiness. The coal company of heaven glorifies your name and rejoices to do your will. Therefore, we pray that our voices may be heard with theirs, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord God, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. 
in the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Creator of all, you gave us golden fields of wheat, whose many grains we have gathered and made into this one bread. the gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ given to you. The blood of Christ given to you. At St. Paul's, we have the opportunity to partake of communion physically as well as spiritually. Consecrated hosts, each infused with drops of wine, can be picked up Monday to Friday from 9 to 12 or by appointment from a table just inside, inside the main entrance. They'll be in individual paper cups and covered with a sealed baggie to make them safe for everyone. We recommend that you hold on to the, way, the host and partake physically during communion time at this moment of the service. Our communion hymn.
All of us have had the opportunity to feed on our Lord in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And so I invite all who aren't receiving communion physically today to say this prayer for communion on our screens together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And let us pray the prayer after communion. Eternal God, you have fed us with the bread of angels. May we who come under their protection, like them, give you continual service and praise. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May Holy Michael bring you peace. May Holy Gabriel bring you hope. May Holy Raphael bring you healing. And until we meet again, may you be held in the light, love, and presence of the Lord and all God's messengers. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love this day and always. We have uh, some announcements that I'm going to uh, just share. Um, we're back to virtual, or not virtual, but uh, online services only, uh, as you are most likely aware. Uh, just a reminder that uh, uh, as of right now, the, uh, what we have been told is that uh, it will be for at least the next four weeks, so this week and three other weeks, uh, that this will take place for. Uh, and then towards the end of that time, the diocese will evaluate the situation that's going on with this fourth wave of COVID and uh, uh, give us guidance as to whether we'll be able to start to meet again in person. So please don't assume that after four weeks we'll be back in person, uh, but also don't assume that we won't be. <laughs> so please keep uh, uh, watching your emails and, and uh, other ways that we are communicating about this. Uh, that, this does mean that we are having a post-service coffee time today that's virtual uh, and uh, that uh, will be at 11.30 a.m. via Zoom. Uh, the link that you need uh, for that is in, uh, well, it's in the order of service, which is in the sermon section of our website. It was also in my Friday uh, parish emailing and in this morning's uh, email newsletter. We're continuing our uh, Discovery video series from the Episcopal Diocese of Texas. It takes place uh, via Zoom Wednesdays from, uh, from 7.30 till 9 p.m. Uh, so please let me know by Wednesday at 4 p.m. if you would like to participate in that. Uh, do look for an online prayer service uh, this Thursday. So that'll be uh, posted on our Facebook and YouTube uh, platforms. And uh, also, uh, I should mention that there are many other things that you might want to be uh, kept abreast of. And you can find those in our September 26th news bulletin. Uh, and that's available uh, online in the news section of our website. Uh, also, uh, uh, Living Waters, uh, the September issue is a great uh, source of uh, information about our life together. And uh, I mentioned earlier about our, uh, that uh, we have a weekly uh, newsletter that uh, uh, is sent out and also my uh, weekly emailings. If you'd like to receive those uh, and aren't receiving those right now, it means that you're not on our email list. So please.
contact me and let me know what your email address is and we'll make sure that you receive those. Uh, my homily uh, uh, today uh, uh, featured a portion, of course, of uh, Bishop Sidney Black's words from the service uh, in the National Church, uh, uh, or service sorry, that the National Church has uh, produced to mark the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation this year. Uh, it's entitled, Every Child Matters, Grace Will Lead Them Home. Uh, you can find it by going to our uh, National Church uh, website. Um, and uh, every child matters, grace will lead them home. And of course, the words grace will lead them home are taken from uh, the hymn Amazing Grace, uh, which is a hymn uh, that our national indigenous archbishop has said uh, is beloved in uh, many First Nations congregations. So in solidarity with our First Nations brothers and sisters, let's join in with the angels in extolling God's praise as we sing this as our closing hymn now together. serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.